everyone, it's me, Laura Ellen. We're here for another video in our Diffusion of Innovations Theory series. In case you forgot, I'm a self-proclaimed nerd, researcher, and implementation scientist who also loves coffee and soccer. In this video, we're going to talk through five common misconceptions about Diffusion of Innovations Theory. If you're a skeptic, this is the video for you. Here we go. Let's dig right into the first misconception. I'm a pragmatist. Diffusion of innovations theory is not for me. Depending on your educational background, you may not be super familiar with theories overall. Then to have someone like me shoving theory down your throat makes you even more resistant. I get it. I used to really push back on the idea of using theory in my research or as a way to help me think about relationships between different variables. My hope is that this series of videos will help you to realize how practical diffusion of innovations theory really is. Diffusion of innovations theory can also help you to identify other researchers and studies which examine similar concepts to the ones you're interested in. For example, if you're examining the role of champions within a primary care clinic, using diffusion of innovations theory can be helpful to find other research on the role of champions. Without diffusion of innovations theory, we may not have a common or shared language. Misconception number two, diffusion of innovations theory is antiquated and not useful in today's complex world, or technology has changed exponentially since diffusion of innovations theory was first written. It's not relevant now. Yes, you're correct. Diffusion of innovations theory was first introduced in 1962. That was before I was born. They didn't have Twitter or smartphones or electronic health records then, but that doesn't mean diffusion of innovations theory is irrelevant to your work. The underlying concepts of the innovation communicated through channels over time to members of a social system are relevant today, even if the innovations and channels look a lot different. For example, Rogers first examined the adoption of the use of genetically modified crops among farmers in the Midwest. So yeah, that doesn't necessarily relate to the adoption of a mobile app for kids with disabilities. That said, the concepts of barriers or relative advantage or trialability still apply. The third misconception, diffusion of innovations theory is only about dissemination, not implementation. Yes, part of diffusion of innovations theory is about how information spreads, but it's about so much more. Diffusion of innovations theory is not only about dissemination of information, but also about the decision to adopt or not and the consequences of adoption. The fourth common misconception is diffusion of innovations theory is just about the S curve. Can I be honest for a moment? This is the one I see most often in publications and also the one that probably makes me the most upset when I see it. Look, I get it. You don't wanna read the whole book. It's a lot. It's almost 500 pages. Most folks genuinely don't have the time to read it all. However, by just remembering diffusion of innovations theory as the S-curve, you are stripping it of its breadth and depth that this theory has to offer. Selfishly, that's why I wanted to do this series, to hopefully convince you that diffusion of innovations theory is about so much more than just the S-curve. And honestly, it's not even the most interesting part. <sighs> Okay, now that I've calmed back down, let's talk about our final misconception. The fifth common misconception is, well, I'm using a framework, so I really don't need diffusion of innovations theory. Right, okay, there are probably over 100 implementation science frameworks. One of the most common implementation science framework is the CIFR. Guess what? Much of what's in the CIFR is based on diffusion of innovations theory. When you're working on an implementation science research study, consider using both a theory, like diffusion of innovations theory, and a framework, like CIFR, that complement each other. It can go a long way in helping your study to be robust and also helping you to think about aspects of your problem that maybe you haven't thought about before. I get that at times it feels overwhelming. That's what this video series is for. I'm here to help you understand more of what diffusion of innovations theory has to offer. 
Remember, when you're thinking about your implementation science research question, think about what theories may be applicable to your question. You can do it. You can use theory to support your research. I'm Laura Ellen, your resident theory nerd, and this has been five common misconceptions about diffusion of innovations theory. I'll see you in the next video.